It's winter now in Tasmania and the days are quite short. And in Tasmania it does get icy and we do get snow and, and frost. So with the laser I like to keep it uh, warm and this is all you really need to do. And uh, it, you know, let's keep a blanket on it. And I also put a 60 watt incandescent bulb on a, it's, it's actually a, a auto vehicle light that I've had for years actually. And that's all it requires to uh, keep the frost out of the, the laser tube. Because I have distilled water running through the laser tube. So today's project is quite a delicate one. My wife has got a, a new hobby uh, putting Diamante pictures together and uh, I'm cutting out a, a sort of reducing frame to put it into a larger wood frame. So what I'm doing at the moment is I've set a um, scrap piece of card up which is roughly the same thickness as the card that I want to cut onto the laser and I'm just raising the bed up uh, to a, a closer height and then I'm going to put it on automatic focus and that takes it down to exactly 9.5 millimeters which focuses the lens so I've opened up laser cut 6.1 and I'm just drawing a square box, a test box, and which is, I, I'm going to set exactly 2 inches by 2 inches, but in millimeters it's 50.8 by 50.8. And then I open up the dialog box to set the laser, first of all the speed, which I set at 15 millimeters per second. And now this is the strike of the laser, which is 25. This is the corner power of the laser, which I set at 25. And the normal running of the laser, I set at 20. And of course, there's always blowing. So now I load that up to the laser and then datum the laser or tell the laser where the start of that little job is and then I just do a run around to make sure well that's where it's going to be and then cut it and this is a very very easy job for this 100 watt laser but you can overcook it and in this case it is a little tiny bit charred. You can see that it's, it's quite dark on the, the cut edge. So um, I think what I actually did then was I dialed the speed up slightly and the power down slightly and I just reset the datum and then recut it. You can see it's running faster now. And that seemed to have done the trick. It was less sort of um, charcoal. It was it was uh, a lighter type of brown rather than a black, which is what you're looking for really. And you can see a little bit of reflection there. Those little marks. That's off the honeycomb table. So now what I'm doing is I'm setting, I, I drew a larger um, box then, the actual size that I want cut. So now I'm laying it out on this card to get it absolutely square. So I can cut it out square. <laughs> It turned out to be, it needed to be 15 millimeters in by both sides. 
I just run it around then just to try and see I it up see if it was square and if you notice there I did actually move it so the next operation then is to cut it and check it to make sure that it well it has come out the right dimensions And I'm running this at two and a half times speed. Okay, so now what I did, I, these are actually um, small magnets that I found. They were originally, I think, clothes hooks that uh, have mag, mag mounts. So I took the clothes hooks out of them and I just use the mag mounts for um, holding things square on the on the table they work very well I also use them for standoffs as well um, you know I think uh, any of the dollar shops will, will sell them so now I've got the right location for my actual piece that I'm going to cut just a matter of getting it in there square and uh, doing the job so just checking to see if it's square I just had to move it about a millimeter, which is about 40 tail. And recheck it. And then cut it. Uh, this is actual speed. So it's running about just under an inch per second. And if you notice the edge on this now the cut edge is a very very light brown that's what you're looking for so it's not burning it it is actually just well he evaporating the material and the blower is blowing it, blowing it away so this is the the diamante picture that my wife spent about four days on actually putting this together um, piece by piece, little, little tiny diamantes, piece by piece, a lot of time spent on that. So it's crucial that I get it absolutely right. Mark it with a pencil. Now these scissors are very special scissors actually. They, I bought them to cut um, Kevlar and Aramid. Now Aramid is about let me see, about 10 times stronger than steel. That's real special stuff. It's far, far stronger than Kevlar.
uh, and these these scissors are actually coated with titanium so they stay sharp to be able to cut that sort of stuff just the rough fit in to make sure that it does that I've cut off enough so it does actually fit in there and then the fitting so I hope you've liked this little video today I hope it's been uh, informative for you and just to show you these lasers can do very delicate jobs as well so thank you for watching and it's bye for now